All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. And is it a touchdown? Touchdown, Cody Epps. He's going to have the touchdown. For the touchdown by Isaac Rex. What's Trending presented by Feastbox, donating 10% of every order to Full of Hope, a charitable organization that helps feed hungry families. Camp Kalani 2023 just about to begin amidst Big 12 expansion madness. I cannot think of a better way to explain it. Expansion! It has been just unbelievably (laughs) entertaining over the past few weeks. I didn't miss anything last week. (laughs) Well, what's funny is... You need to go on vacation more because whenever you leave, something crazy happens. Well, well, maybe that's (laughs) for a reason. In in the BYU magazine, there was an article that came out um, where we explained some stuff about the Big 12. And in it, we said, hey, but there may be more teams added. Yes, Hey, I believe you uh, were the one quoted uh, in that specific listen, regard. I tried to be a teammate, a good teammate yeah, there. But expansion yeah, could happen. Yeah, yeah, the week that comes out, boom goes the dynamite. Well, we're at 13 and maybe 14 by yeah. the end of training camp. We'll see. It could extend, as Brett McMurphy told us on Friday, into October before we know what's actually happening. It would seem that the Pac-12 has the easiest path, Jaron, because there's no buyout. Because there's no deal. Well, the TV contract ends, right? And then they can leave. The grant of rights is up, and they're good to go. Easy peasy there's no for buyout, Colorado. Like uh, teams under contract, for example, San Diego State, SMU, Memphis, you know, and so on. Cool 34 mil will get San Diego State out of the Mountain West. Any Mountain West team. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? Good luck. So with these two emerging storylines, well, one is already full fledged into the limelight. The other is emerging through BYU football as they move into training camp, which will have more of your attention this week because there will be, you know, somewhat actual football in practice form, but like football that you get to watch. We get to watch BYU practice this week. So what has more of your attention? Is it BYU football training camp or Big 12 conference expansion news? This week, it's it's expansion. Like fall camp is exciting. They don't put on pads till the fifth practice so it's going to be later this week and even then uh the number one goal of fall camp is to not get hurt so uh i i fall camp's fun don't get me wrong but the expansion conversation news is way more exciting (laughs) frankly than sometimes (laughs) even the game spence like remember an invite for byu and the other three did not come in august it came in week two of the season so, like you mentioned with McMurphy, it could bleed into the year. So, for me, um, you know, training camp's very exciting. Fall camp, which it's not fall whatsoever, by the way. It's still summer, but whatever. Uh, it is expansion for me. How about you? I agree. Outside of the maybe observation period that we get tomorrow for who knows how many minutes. Roughly 15 minutes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. We'll gross uh observations, overestimation. Will we be granted anything later this week, potentially on Friday? Friday, but yeah. Outside of that... Like, outside of those sessions, I believe I will be all in watching BYU football and focused 100% on what I am seeing from the players and identifying jersey numbers and seeing where everybody is. Outside of those two specific sessions, it will be about Big 12 expansion. Why wouldn't it? And we will all continue to be glued to X or Twitter. Or whatever it is. Formerly right known as Twitter. Okay. The, the artist formerly Every known as Twitter. Every Center graphic tweet is X, formerly <laughs> Twitter. Okay, for it's, how long do we do that? It's the thing now. I get yeah. it, I get it. Yeah, so uh, formerly Twitter. We're now just why. We will be paying attention to to see if Arizona takes the last donut in the box of six people standing around. Or is it somebody else? Does it fall to UConn? I tend to believe that if it's going to happen fast, it's got to be a Pac-12 team. If a Pac-12 team doesn't bite, then maybe we push later on into the year and it falls to a group of five team. I don't know. But that's where the majority of my attention will be, is following the teams that were outlined by Brett McMurphy as maybe Arizona, certainly somebody else from the Big 12 or from the Pac-12. That's who the Big 12 teams are, or Big 12 conference are most interested in. Yeah. And For then sure. it's sure. the group of five teams, Memphis, UConn, 
maybe somebody else? No Gonzaga talk in this, by the way. Remember how hot and heavy that was? Yes. Oh, and then throw into, told us on the show it might be a couple of weeks away. Then throw like, into the what? mix just straight rumors that Oregon, Washington, and now maybe Clemson and Florida State out of the ACC, they're thinking about going to the Big Ten. I think that is a purely just somebody started a rumor it's out pie there. pie in the sky. Yes. Although, if you had said, uh, you know, USC and, and UCLA to the Big Ten, you know, uh, two years ago, we would have. Said, no, We'd have you, laughed in everyone's you're face. Yeah. Yes. So, Kevin Garnett is, is right. Anything's possible. But regarding um, expansion, okay, McMurphy, Brad McMurphy, great interview on the show Friday. Um, he clarified some things in an article on the Action Network. Let's talk about it because okay. this gives us some insight. Let's insta- do it. In the new Granite Rights deal, ESPN is paying 20 mil and Fox is paying 11.7 mil, okay? Per school annually. Per school annually. So, ESPN has said, hey, they, they guarantee pro rate. Pro rata, meaning if you add a P5, you, we will pay that amount up to 16 teams. But in Fox, it's up to 14. Um, and so that that tells us there's room for one more for sure that gets a full share. Now, they go back to Fox and be like, all right, look, we got Arizona or whatever. Would you pay Fox? Will you pay them? It, no, Arizona would be the 14. Hey, we suddenly got Oregon Washington or we want... Two others. We're up to the, 16, basically. We're up to 16. Will you pay them the 11.7 part? They can figure that out. Arizona feels like the leader in the clubhouse based on what is being conversed. The pie in the sky thought certainly would be a domino that tips the Pac-12 over the edge, and then you might see the floodgates open to some degree. I wonder how much ESPN and Fox are willing to pay if there are more teams available. Because if Oregon and Washington actually do go yeah. to the Big Ten, that is the damn breaking for the for the Pac-12. It's one thing to have Colorado. It's another thing to have Colorado and Arizona. But if more teams beyond those two go, now you're turning into Mountain West Conference yes. Plus. It's good night for the it's Pac-12. It's good night, yeah. It's not good night yet, but in hindsight, we may look back and see that Colorado, which isn't the first domino. The first domino is USC and UCLA, certainly. That, that Colorado uh, is, is certainly a big piece of this, but... The biggest pieces sitting there are Oregon and Washington. If I'm Utah, I'm the last one to leave. Like, I'm not jumping into this. We've won the league the last year. This has been a great fit for us. This has been an upgrade. Why the heck would we leave? And, and the more this conversation happens, and Twitter is just a buzz with BYU. If we all fans. thought that the Pac-12 versus Big 12 rivalry was good, you know, <laughs> a month ago, think about what it is today, right now. It is hilarious. Like, like, BYU's stance in this and the, the framework of this on Twitter is so interesting. Utah should be crushing it. They've just won the Pac-12 the last two years, yet the Pac-12 is the laughing stock of college football at the moment. It is wild how quickly things can change and how much sometimes on the field doesn't even matter. Like, what Utah has done has been amazing the last two years, but it do- no one cares. It's all about... Can you sustain the league? What's your TV contract? Where is it? What's going on? It's not there, dude. So I wonder if Arizona will, or someone, will also jump out like Colorado, not having seen a contract. They didn't wait until they saw it. And go, nope. They, they just went now. I wonder if another team will do that like Arizona. Colorado said, and we think, and we expounded as much, again, with Brett McMurphy on Friday, that the final straw was Colorado showing up at Pac-12 Media Day and there being nothing from the conference in regard to a deal. And at that point, they were like, okay, we're not going to wait around anymore. We're choosing, in their words, stability over the uncertainty of the Pac-12. They've lived in this neighborhood. They know it's good. They know it has good schools. They like the friends. They're the guaranteed yeah, they $31.7 million in a football contract through 2031. That's guaranteed. They know the deal. They're invited. They're welcomed back in. They, they chose to jump now. Yeah, they have stories and relationships. Is and there that. another school that feels as much desperation or as much frustration, I should say, as Colorado about not having a deal? All the reports would indicate that Arizona is there, but Arizona's president, as early as last week, was cited as saying, look, we're waiting for the deal. That's what I have said. I'm standing by that. We're waiting to see what the deal is. Uh, what is the deal? What, what's your deal? How long are you going to wait? But at some point, does even he lose patience because the deal is not showing up? It might turn out, Jerem, that the Pac-12 
gets a nice lucrative deal. And it's 30 million or 35 million a year for really? streaming Amazon. I'm just saying, like, it might. Okay, great. It likely will. But how do you save face? Even if that good of a deal comes about, how do you recover from this? How do you recover from this and main, or, or gain back, earn back trust and respectability? Earn back, you say? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I don't know how you recover from this. The Pac 12's got so many issues, obviously, uh, no deal. The fact that they have to pay Comcast back, like, you couldn't crunch the. The, the atrocity that it is, the uh, amount it takes to just have the offices in San Francisco and so on and so forth. Look, I would love for the Pac-12 or 10 or 9 or whatever to continue to exist. A West I think Coast good Conference is good. Football. A West Coast Conference yes. that is a Power 5, not the actual WCC, is good for sports. Yes, college sports. I think it's good. Like, I've said this. I grew up watching those games, um, you know, in Oregon and Washington, and then when I moved to Utah. Like, I enjoyed that. We all liked watching the USC teams in yeah. 03 and 04. Now we're going to watch those teams, but it has nothing to do with a team connected to the West, but they represent the West. It's kind of a weird dynamic. Let, let's see how this shakes out. But, yeah, certainly last week was interesting because someone not having seen the deal was like, I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I know that uh, even, even what they get – and, again, we've said this, but let's discuss it. Even if that number approximates the Big 12, you are not on Fox and ESPN. If you were on CBS and CBS Sports Network, I could see, like, okay, yeah. you're, you're relevant. You're going to be on an Applebee's or whatever, like, the, the, like, median test of is your game just randomly on in front of people? If you are streaming, how many people are going to randomly pull up those streams that aren't Pac-12 fans? Like, t you're not catering to fans of the teams. You're catering to the average college yes. football fan. Will they tune in to that matchup? And they may not even have that streaming service available. Like, they, it, it's like the friends that are like, oh, you're watching the whatever on Apple uh, Plus? It's like, well, you no. have to have Apple Plus. No, I'm not watching that. But if you have it on Netflix, yeah, I can access it right away or whatever. It depends on – the. there's, like, the mainstream linear channels. Yeah. There's the non-mainstream linear channels. And then there's main and non-mainstream streaming opportunities. Like, even if the Pac-12 got a good number – you aren't as relevant. Like, game day is not discussing you at the same level. They are not pulling those highlights you become the, a or B the blocks. You are buried. Yeah, you become the Kirk Herbstreet who will say, it'd be a little difficult to find the game, but uh, <laughs> it should be a good game. Because it's not on ESPN. <laughs> like, that's a shot at the non-ESPNs, right? Hey, have fun watching Cal and Washington State while you're sitting in Aubergine Kitchen or Zupa's. And you're asking him I to stream. I love Zupas. <laughs> you and I love Zupas. We go to Zupas. I will say this to close out. If BYU fans, if you're one of the BYU fans that don't want Utah in the Big 12, there are a couple of things that you there should be rooting so hard. There are more and more of you. Yeah. You should be rooting so hard for it to happen. Two things. Number one, you should be rooting for the Pac-12 to stay in existence. Seriously. Yeah. Because if it goes away, there's a great chance that Utah, with its brand and how good of a football program they have right now, they're going to work their way into the Big 12. So if you don't totally. want Utah and BYU in the same conference, you should be hoping that the Pac-12 stays alive. I agree. Secondly... You should also, okay, if if somebody leaves the Pac-12, you should be hoping that it's not Oregon or Washington, okay? You should, like Arizona, even if Arizona leaves for the Big 12 and they yeah. get to 14, it's fine. So as long same, as Oregon and Washington same. are still there, yeah. the Pac-12 will remain. Okay, so those, I think those are the, the two things. And they'll be what the Big 12 was before without the big brands of Texas and Oklahoma, if you will. Then you don't have to worry about Utah being in the same conference as BYU. By the way, I flipped a little bit on this conversation. It's hilarious to me. The dynamic of the Big 12 versus the Pac-12 and BYU versus Utah is so hilarious. and It's the best. Fun and like, enjoyable. We've never been in this leverage spot before, right? <laughs> we've been in the we've lost nine games in a row and we're in an independent oh, spot. Oh, my goodness. And now we are sitting on a one-game win through two years. And, uh, yeah, in, the, in a power five league, let's go. Yeah. And again, again, it doesn't matter that BYU hasn't done jack squat in the Big 12 and Utah's won two league titles. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine how ticked off we'd be if we'd won the Big yes. 12 two years in yes. a row, but we were getting dumped on? Yes, I understand. That would stink so bad. But even some high-level Utah accounts are going the, the sarcasm it's route. It's BYU's like, fault. And, and well, they've, they're like, oh, yeah, we're upgrading with Tulane and San Diego State and maybe Memphis and Colorado State. What an upgrade, George. Oh, how the turns table. <laughs> Back 12. These are Utah fans. Oh, my goodness.